Yep. There you go there, and then from there, yeah. What do you guys think about that transition for classic with the All right, guys. So this is Con Wolf. He's a natural bodybuilder. He's gonna. He's a natural pro bodybuilder. My bad. He's gonna be helping me out with some classic physique poses. And uh, if you guys wanna follow along, you guys can you know learn a little bit of uh, the tips and tricks to classic physique. All right. Let's go into your front relaxed. Good. Yeah. So I can go here, or a lot of people. Yeah, there's two different variations of this pose that, that Dan can do here, where you will look bigger up top with kind of blowing all the air out, getting more width to your lats, or you can do more of a crunch down ab pose. If he was doing bodybuilding, I would say doing the, do the first pose, but since it's classic physique, for him, I actually think that he should accentuate, I like more of that the abs crunch down just for classic physique. Make sure you stay on both your quads. That's one thing a lot of people do is they, they, they get so focused on getting their upper body right that they let off the tension in their quads. So you want to make sure with posing, you start from the ground up, get your calves, quads set, and then go into your upper body. So yeah, let's, let's go show the abs. Abs crunched. Front relaxed pose. This is the pose that you're going to be in the longest. So you really want to master this pose and feel comfortable and confident in this pose. All right, so from here, we'll go quarter turn to your right. So from here, remember you want to take your front foot and we're going to lead it here. Yep. This is something we got, we continue to work with Dan kind of getting that. We want that effect of making your leg look bigger from the side. So we're going to take that inside leg and we're going to pop it into our hamstring. There we go. Kind of get more of that separation uh, in the quad, making his leg look bigger from the side. So again, we start from the ground up Then from here, you want to really, really make sure we're not get that right behind the glute and really suck down on that serratus. That's where you want to blow all the air out of your diaphragm there. Okay, let's go quarter turn to your right. So now this is a rear relaxed pose. Again, you want to start ground up calves. Make sure those hamstrings are tight. So if I smack them, they're nice and flexed. And then from here, really, really spreading out your lats, making your back look as wide as possible uh, in this pose. And since you have the judges below you, a nice little kind of arch back towards the judges can kind of give you a little, just a little bit of a cushion compared to somebody that might be standing straight up. You might get more of an edge if you're kind of tilted back a little bit more because it's going to put your back closer to the judges, giving the illusion that your back is bigger. Okay, good. Let's go quarter turn to your right. So again, yep, got the feet in the front, kind of like get that, push that knee in. There we go. Same thing, really blow that air out. Good. Take that there. All right, good. Let's go quarter turn to your right. So now you're gonna be back, he's gonna be back in his front relaxed. And now we're gonna go through the main classic physique poses. So we'll start with, like, and he's got, his, he's got his front relaxed perfected here. He's in his pose. So from here, we're gonna go front double bicep. Tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A reminder, yeah, you guys, posing, this is why posing is so important during a contest prep uh, to make sure that you're, because you can continue to make sure that your, your conditioning for your posing is perfected so that when you get on stage, you don't look tired because the judges will see that if you look tired and you're breathing heavy on stage, sweating. you're sweating really bad. So again, that's why, this is why practicing posing, you know, every day, every week, especially as you start getting closer to a show is essential. Here. Yep. So let's get yeah, out. We're going to go front double bicep, which this is kind of one. I think we have it mastered now, right? Or do we're still kind of tweaking it. So this is one of Dan's really, really good, strong poses. He's got really, really big arms, a great midsection, good quads. So this is a really, really strong pose for him, but there are different, uh, show him kind of the different variations that you can kind of remember to a kind of arching. Yeah, you can't, you can. Yeah, again, for classic physique, these are more things that you can do. Yeah, that look kind of, yeah. Again, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to beat against just your regular 
uh, ab scrunch front double. So let's go back into your front relaxed. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna go abs and thigh. There we go. Usually you like putting, if you have a dominant quad or a quad that has kind of more separation, you can lead, you can lead with that quad in front and kind of put the, put the quad emphasis on your toe or you can go on your heels and really lock in that quad. Especially if somebody has feathering on the outside of their quad, that's a way that you can kind of lock down your knee and get that feathering to pop out. The leaner that you get, the more that will show. And this would be too where if in plastic physique, if anybody can do a vacuum, yeah, I yeah a vacuum pose. Doing vacuums here. Um, but my vacuum, I either can do a vacuum or really have to work on it because it kind of sucks. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I, I feel like it's more of a genetic thing for a lot of people. Some people just naturally have a really big rib cage and yeah, they can pull like, that pose off. But this is where like, if, any, if you can pull off a good vacuum, this is where, the, this is where you would put it. Yeah, yeah, leave some comments down below. If there's anybody who's like, who sucked at vacuums and then they just practice, practice, practice and got better. Or if people are just, they just can do vacuums or you can't do vacuums. So yeah. I really, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know no, I, I, yeah, I can't do a good vacuum either. So I almost feel like it's more of a genetic thing, but I could be wrong. I think you have to have a really, really tiny waist and like a big rib cage. <laughs> I don't know. Josh can do. Oh, a good a one good that one, looks yeah. good. Yeah. So let's go. So get back in your front relaxed. Let's go quarter turn to your right. Yeah, we'll go right, yeah, we'll go into a side chest. So again, what we'll start here is again, guys, with posing 101, always starting from the ground up. So with Dan, what he's doing is he's got his, he doesn't have his feet set right for a side chest. Remember, we wanna take the, the oh. inside foot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we wanna, remember, kinda of take that right foot, kinda of angle it towards the back of the stage, and then get your foot and tuck it in there. Get that, get that calf set. Yep, and remember, sit on that, sit on that leg. So we, get, so we get that separation in the quad and the hamstring through there, and then go into the, number two, kind of bring this closer into you. Get your lats, get your lats flared. Kind of makes you look wider up top. And then, yeah, kind of open up a little bit more and really get on that serratus. There we go. Try going, you kind of have your hand over your wrist. Kind of go, or sorry, over your, over your fist. Go over your wrist. So it's kind of more, yeah, through, through here, not over the fist. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now go back into your, back into your side relaxed. Now the feet, do the feet move from here? Yep, yeah, you're gonna put your, you're gonna put your, your front foot a little bit more forward. Okay. I just want you to kind of naturally get back into that. Okay, again, so then now from here, we'll go quarter turn to your right, and then we're gonna go into your rear double bicep. So again, this is where ground up again, uh, some shows might call left or right uh, foot spiked or calf spiked. So we'll do, let's do a right, right leg, calf spiked, rear double bicep. So again, too, notice how he has his, what you wanna see with this is you want both of your feet pointed out. You don't wanna keep your feet completely straight uh, that'll make your legs look narrow from the back. So what this is doing, this is making his legs look wider from the back. But again, we want to start with ground up, our calves, hamstrings, and then going into the rear double here and a nice kind of, yeah, I do like the look, the turn to the side with the head. I think that looks really clean and a nice kind of arch back. That looks good. Yeah, your doubles, yeah, your doubles good. We don't really need to tweak much of that. Let's go quarter turn to your right. <clears throat> So now let's go into your op let's go into your other side chest. <clears throat> One thing that's completely normal, you guys, is it's normal to have uh, certain certain side poses that feel more natural or dominant than others. So I think you were, isn't one of your your side chests you feel better hitting. Yeah, my right. Yeah. So again, so that's kind of completely, but you do want to learn to master both because in some shows a judge might have you do a left side chest and a right side chest. So make sure that you're practicing posing on both sides. So let's go into a right side chest here. But again, remember ground up, always start. So you're going into top before getting in, into his lower body. We want to start with the lower body first. Yep, get that, get that, get the calf spiked right in the middle of the foot. Get down on that leg. Get that, yep, there we go. I want you sitting on that a little bit more. Always want to make sure that you're sitting on that leg because the more you sit on that leg, 
you're going to get more leg definition from the side. You can even, I want, get, get down more, get down more there. There we go. See, the more you get down, look at how much more separation is getting in your legs. But what happens is, as you get tired and you get fatigued, it's easier to stand up. So that's where people will let off on their legs. But again, upper body, we can open up a little bit. There we go. Okay, this is good. All right, let's go quarter turn to your right. Now this is where we would go and do your favorite classic physique pose. And I think we got an idea that we kind of worked on uh, last week while he was posing. Let's kind of show the one that we worked on. Remember you went with your, your wasn't it your, yep. There we go. Went into that, which I think is a really, really good pose for Dan. Highlights his midsection, his biceps, his arms, the quads. And then remember we went into that. Remember we, we, you kind of went from here and then you kind of went into that one? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, from here? Yep. There you go there. And then from there, yeah. What do you guys think about that transition for classic physique? I think that looks good. He's kind of hitting, he's kind of hitting two poses in one, but I feel like they're both really strong poses uh, on Dan. Oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> the faster somebody gets into a pose, the more the judges have that look on that person. If you're sitting there wasting all this time transitioning into your side relaxed and all, everybody else has already been hitting it, yeah. you're that person, the judges aren't, they didn't even look at you. So it's like, you see a lot of guys that they're still fiddling, fucking around, everybody's already in the pose and all of a sudden they're calling the next pose and you never even really hit yours. If you're practicing posing, one of the things that I love doing is just going through all of your mandatory poses, holding each pose for five seconds, but just practicing like, like if you were on stage and how the judges would call things out, just run through all of your poses. This kind of helps with posing conditioning and just getting prepped for what you're gonna be doing on stage. So let's get into it. Let's go front relaxed. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, quarter turn to your right. This is where I wanna see Dan try to transition into poses faster. I mean, we can still pick up the pace here. One, two, three, four, five. Quarter turn to your right. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Quarter turn to your right. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Quarter turn to your right. So he's gonna go back into a front relaxed. From here, we're gonna kind of call out all of the main classic physique poses, starting with front double bicep. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Let's go into an abs and thigh. Good, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I want you back in a front relaxed. Now I want to go quarter turn to your right. Okay, and I want to see a side chest. So again, let's, we want to get that, get that foot spiked. Now remember feet, get the, there you go. Get the, get your inner foot, your inner foot, um, your inner foot spiked. There we go. We can, we still got to work on that feet, on the feet positioning on this. Look at, look, at, look at my feet, get your calf spiked. Oh, okay. There we go. But see, this is where, guys, this is why practicing, because these all need to be polished by the time we get like a week out. Okay, then now let's go back into your side relaxed. And then let's go quarter turn to your right. So then we're getting your, getting your re-relaxed pose. And then from here, we're gonna go left, calf spiked rear double bicep. So you're gonna spike that left calf. So it's kind of opposite of what we did last time just to kind of throw him off a little bit to make sure that he masters each pose of like right, right calf spiked and left. Okay, good, pose looks good. Hold it, hold it, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, back into a re-relaxed. Now let's go quarter turn to your right. Good. 
Let's go right, yeah, get that, we'll get in here first, and now I'll go right into your side chest. There we go, got the calf spiked. Let's, let's get into that faster. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, get back into your, your rear relaxed. All right, now let's go quarter turn to your right. So you're back at the front. Okay, now we're gonna finish with his favorite classic physique pose. Good, one, two, three, hold it. One, two, three, four, five, good. So that right there, you guys, was just kind of a good way if you're practicing posing, do a couple of rounds of those, even if it's you know every day after the gym, but this is what helps just running through all of your poses. And again, what I was telling Dan earlier, what, what you'll see a lot of times in shows is a lot of guys that can't get into their poses fast enough, they end up losing out because everybody else is getting into their pose fat, like let's say a side chest, everybody else is hitting the side, the side chest, the judges is looking at those person hitting the poses while you're taking too long and you're still transitioning in your pose. So the judges aren't looking at you, they're looking at all of the other competitors around you already in that pose. All right guys, big thanks to a professional natural bodybuilder, Con Wolf. Um, he's gonna be on my channel a lot. We, we live in the same area, but I uh, just wanted to update you guys. I'm five weeks out. Um, my show is in Tucson, April 27th. It's an OBC, OBC show. And Con was just telling me there's another one in June, um, June 22nd, and I didn't think it was a pro qualifier, but I guess it is. So I might uh, be doing the June one as well. We'll see how this, uh, this one in April goes. Maybe I should skip the April one because I'm a, bit, a little fluffy. Yeah, but. I think for a lot of people, one thing, that, one thing you guys got to realize, there's always other shows. So if you feel like you're not going to be maybe at 100% for, a certain, uh, for a, certain, a certain show that you originally wanted to do, maybe it's best sometimes to give yourself more time to diet, get leaner because that way you're, you're just gonna do that much better in your show when you bring yeah. that much of a better package when you actually come at 100% and maybe not 80%. So maybe with Dan, maybe wait till maybe you're two, three weeks out, kind of assess where your condition yeah, yeah. is at and then see if, I, I kind of gave him the idea of maybe doing that show for like a warm up show, kind of yeah. get, you know, get the posing down, see how the mm. shows ran and then that way he can keep dieting for that June show and be at a better condition, which you know he'll just be more confident in his physique and yeah. look that much better. Because literally there's two months between the shows. So in two months, that could, that could be somebody literally losing maybe anywhere from a healthy way. I, I would recommend maybe losing eight to 10 pounds uh, in that two weeks. But you know, on a physique athlete, that can be the difference between good conditioning and great conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That would be a good idea. So this. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, if I, you know, by chance I get my pro card, we'll see what happens from there. But I'm going to do that show April 27th in Tucson. And I uh, just want to update you guys on my macros a little bit. So I'm doing uh, 270 protein right now, 65 fat, 150 carbs. I'm working out in the morning after my first meal. I wait about an hour and then uh, do cardio in the afternoon. Um, I only do 20 minutes of cardio, but it's pretty high intensity. Um, I'll mix it up doing like super high intensity, like sprints and stuff like that. And then every once in a while I'll taper it back. You know, if I have a leg day or something the next day, then I don't want my legs to be, you know, totally worn out. So I'll do something like low intensity, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, kind guys. Of tell them, kind of tell them too, like, you know, you're five weeks out from a show or how's your, your energy levels right now? Their workouts, you know, any fatigue, you know, this is where this are common things that happen during a contest prep, yeah. you know, just week after week of like dieting on lower calories, you're going to have workouts where you're going to feel like crap. You're not going to have much energy. How are you feeling so far? Yeah. Surprisingly, my strengths held up pretty good. Um, I'm actually like my, I'm pretty strong right now, but yeah, the fatigue is, is definitely a real thing. Um, hunger and levels, the, hunger levels, the big, another thing that the biggest thing, person. yeah, yeah. Um, it was actually the first week I went on those, because that, that's a pretty hard macro cut for me. I was doing 200 carbs before and 280 protein and like 75 fat, so I cut, cut it down pretty good. Um, so the first week was really hard with the uh, hunger and stuff like that, but it's actually gotten a lot better. So, um, you know, as you lose weight, your body gets used to it, so I'm going to have to cut down, you know, even and more. And one thing but, you guys can do too, as your macros get lower, especially like your carbohydrates and your fat, 
that's one thing that your, um, your food choices can really make a big difference in um, keeping you satiated, which means trying to keep you a full, no matter what though, dieting, you're gonna deal with hunger. There's no way around that. But in certain foods that you choose that are more satiating, so think of like comparing like a bunch of, maybe like a bunch of potato or a bunch of oatmeal, more foods that are really kind of dense and like sit in your stomach yeah. compared to eating a bunch of like simple, some simple carbs like a pop tart or like a cookie. That you're yeah. gonna eat that, you're gonna eat that, you're gonna waste maybe 30, 40 grams of carbs and you're gonna be hungry, you know, two minutes later. Yeah, That's yeah. where, you know, choosing, you know, healthier, micronutrient dense type foods can really, yeah. really kind of help satiate your stomach more, which is gonna keep you fuller longer. Big mental thing. Whenever I cut down, there's always these days where I look in the mirror and I'm like, dang, I look horrible. Yep, I hate that's like, thing. I look yep. like shit. It's a, it's a big mental thing. So if you guys are cutting or are, you know, shredding down, that's, that's one thing I want to remind you of. If you like, you're going to have those days where you just think like, I'm not ready for this. What am I doing? I look like shit. And then you're going to have those days where you're working out and you have a pump and you're like, holy hey, shit, yeah. I'm looking, looking good. I so like my favorite thing to just, say, like you are your own worst critic. Yeah. 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 So you see yourself in the mirror every day. And so a lot of times too, it's harder for you to see changes in your physique because you see yourself in the mirror every day. That's why it's always, it's, it's really helpful to have a coach or a buddy that maybe sees you. Maybe like I see Dan maybe like once a week when we're doing this posing thing. So I kind of have like a different objective eye on him yeah. than he has on himself. So it's kind of really helpful to have somebody that kind of gives you a different outlook on your physique than what you see in yourself because you're always going to kind of more see the, the, the critiques and like the critics of like, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm, you know, I don't think I'm lean enough and all this stuff. You'll play head games, yeah, yeah. which is completely normal. Like I get clients, I do coaching. So I get clients every week to tell me, I don't think I'm lean enough. I don't think I'm lean enough. And I'm like, no, look at, compare like your pictures from maybe a couple weeks ago to now. And then, and then there's the people who are overly confident and they're like, oh yeah, I'm ready and I'm going to do this. And then they show up at the show and they're, they're horrible. Yeah, they look, yeah, yeah. I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand some people that go to shows looking just horrific and it happens every times, show every I mean, show there's had, every show there's people that, like oh yeah my previous coach or trainer told me that i look four weeks out and i saw that i'm like you look more like you're 20 weeks out yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah. know so that's one thing too be careful make sure you're getting like you know um a, you know respectable advice and critiques from people that you can trust and not something that's kind of maybe feeding you bs to kind of i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah khan's gonna be pretty straight straight up with yeah, me i think shooter. he's and I, have uh, high I have high, expecta uh, high expectations for Dan because especially if somebody has the mindset or the, the goal of being like a, a natural professional uh, classic physique athlete or a bodybuilder like I am, then in natural bodybuilding, it's all about, you know, really, really good conditioning, really, really good symmetry. We obviously can't get as huge and big yeah. as an IAPB, you know, professional bodybuilder. So we have to really, really rely on really, really good conditioning, really, really good symmetry, good posing um and that as a natural athlete yeah yeah i think that's that's going to be key here because i don't think i'm going to come in like realistically five weeks um i don't think i'm going to come in as chiseled as i want but i, I really want to get the posing down really want to like i think i have good symmetry good muscle mass for you know being a natural guy so i'm really hoping that that pays off but it's crunch time now guys and i'm going to lower my macros again so uh i'll keep you keep you guys updated on it but Thanks again to Khan for helping me out and uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video if you uh, found it helpful and I'll see you guys next time.